Before I start, I'll just a few words about it. It's obviously unfinished. It needs to be weathered in a few, maybe a few more electrics, a few lights. But by and large, it's running the way I expected it to be. It was a friend of mine. It was for his, he wanted a small layout to fit on a windowsill. And this is about a meter across. It was for his wife's birthday in February, but that's February gone. So hopefully it'll be February next year. The idea is you just switch it on and it does everything by itself. There's no intervention by you until you get tired of it and then just switch it off again. So what I'll do, I'll show you what it does. So what it does is it'll eventually make its way round into all the sidings, uh, the point switch to let it through. It'll cover all the sidings and eventually work its way back to where it started from. So there's sensors on each siding uh, towards the end. You can probably just see some round holes, of that one on the right. There's a, a light dependent resistor buried in there about a centimeter below the level of the track. It'll work under most lighting conditions, which is fortunate because like I said, it might end up being on a windowsill in which case in some cases there'll be uh, sunlight and then darkness, then artificial light. So these this sensor, there's actually seven of them, one under each end of the, the track. There's a contribution from Davy and Charlie who modified a, a pick to drive the, to provide an output almost independently of the light level. So it, it readjusts itself depending on the ambient lighting, which is quite a trick. And while I'm designing this, it, it's difficult to decide on what the timing is. It's using a simple shuttle, one of Davy Dick's simple shuttles. And what you do is you control the polarity of the uh, voltage going to the track. And you have diodes at each end. And as you reverse the, uh, the power to the track, the train will wait until it's enabled through the diode and then will work its way backwards and forwards. So it's a balance between getting the thing to do it without going too fast and at the same time being fast enough so that you don't lose the will to live while you're watching it. You probably noticed there on the circuit is uh, one of the linear servos. All the rest of them under the board are just the rotational time. This one is linear and it's linear because I had no space to put in an ordinary SG90, which all the other the other four are. So they're, they're really handy, but they're like four times the price. So <laughs> it's not your first option, that's for sure. So it's now coming up to more or less where the thing started. And that would be a complete circuit and would, in a few moments, would continue doing this uh, forevermore. Okay, that's what's in it. Simple shuttle, reverse the direction, the light dependent resistors being the, the sensors producing an output when they're blocked. Uh, I use servos. There's a Merrick Servo 4 board, and there's an Arduino Uno, which is a small computer, takes in the inputs and produces outputs. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there. You'll see on the screen, 
in green are the ser are the sensors sensors s1 2 3 4 5 6 7 sensors altogether the yellow blobs are more or less where the sensors are located but not that accurately the p1 2 3 4 and 5 are the points obviously now in capital letters are uh, variables associated with the computer program now I know not all of you will be uh, that interested in program, but variables, you'll all have done algebra at school. So when X is equal to one, five X is equal to five. So that's the kind of thing that's happening here. A is associated with S1, B with S2, C with S3, and so on. And you'll see how this is managed by the uh, computer as the thing. Uh, progresses. So it goes down firstly to S2, and in there, it sets the variable B equals one. So then go backwards, and then conditions are presented to you, or to the computer, I should say. So it occupies sensor one, and it says now, if S is S one is one and B is one, we turn point one. In a way, the sensors tell the system where the train is, and the variables tell the system where the train was. So between the two, you can get a unique set of conditions. So there's S three is one and A is one. So A being one is where the train was. So here it is heading for S4. And the same will apply here. If S4 is one and C is one, it means it's come from C. So let's turn P5 and head off in that direction. Again, S5 is occupied, it makes the variable E equals one, turns P3. Now I should say D equals one. Goes up there. Now when sensor seven is set, it changes G to one, but does nothing else because the train is now going to go back exactly the same way. So there's no need to turn anything. Inspect that is five. It says if that's one and G is one, make P4 straight. So G, of course, is where it's just been. So it hasn't been to sensor six yet, but you'll see what happens in a second. Six is now set, turns the variable F equals one, does nothing else, just waits for the reverse voltage to bring it back. Off it goes to sensor five again. Now it can say if sensor five is one and F is one, we'll make P3 straight and head back towards sensor four. You get the drift by now that what you're really doing is trying to establish a unique condition. And then when that unique condition is met, change the point in whatever direction you want it to go. So here we are at S3, and if that's one and E is one, you could have chosen G is one or F because they're all coming from that direction. Then we turn P2. And off it goes. Now when it gets here, it's where we started. Okay, all the variables are reset to zero except A1, of course, which is one because it's sitting on that sensor. Okay, we'll turn the whole thing over and have a look underneath. Okay. Uh, probably first thing you notice that I've used the two glue sticks to glue all the wires down. 
something trailing around. And uh, top left there is the sim simple shuttle. And indeed, it is simple. There's just a timer chip, a relay, capacitor, and uh, a couple of resistors. Nothing to it. The UNO is in the middle there. That has uh, seven inputs from the different sensors and five outputs to the different to control the uh, servos. CFM is Charlie's famous, no, Charlie's FM uh, driver. It takes a pulse, it's frequency modulated, it takes a pulse from the UNO every so often and is used to drive the uh, traction to the tracks, the moving the loco. Uh, and that's what's reversed by the uh, simple shuttle. Just notice the servos there. These are the SG90s. Most of them are sitting in 3D printed holders, which makes it quite simple to uh, set up and to, uh, it's quite a sturdy kind of way of securing the servos. S4 is the uh, servo foreboard, but like I said, five sets of points. So I needed one more and I'm using the easy points, uh, another kit from Davy. The LDRs over here on the right, uh, again, pretty simple, just one pick chip, uh, two transistors and a few other components. Uh, but like I said, they're remarkable in that they are sensitive to varying light conditions but, and will always ensure that the train uh, can block out the light because the, the LDR device itself is quite sensitive. There's a few off to the left you can't see, but it's really more of the same. Uh, just two more LDOs over there. Okay, here are the things I have under the bonnet. It's simple enough, actually. The seven LDO totties, again, from Charlie and Davey self-adjusting light sensitivity, five servos, one linear, simple shuttle kit, the frequency modulated MOSFET pulse power supply, quite a mouthful, but only two components in it. Uh, the 12 volt DC brick, the Arduino, the easy points, uh, the pocket money kit. And of course, last but not least, all the money you earned from doing this, 5,000 man hours so far. <laughs> and no pay, great. Okay, here's the computer code for you. I just whiz through it. Okay, you've got all that, obviously. Uh, as this video will probably end up on YouTube, if you're interested in the code, you could just slow it down or stop it. Or if you want, I can email it to you. Anyway, that's the whole thing. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll take any questions if you have.